My friends, today's video is all about this monitor right here, the Alzai 21 and a half inch. Now on paper, it has all of the specs that you might want in a budget gaming monitor. It's 21 and a half inches, as I mentioned, 1080p, 75 Hertz, a five millisecond response time at a pretty decent price, but is it any good? Is it actually worth its price? And more importantly, should you buy one? We're gonna get into all of that after we talk about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. They're the online learning community that has thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. Whether that be graphic design, photography, productivity, marketing, or freelance and entrepreneurship, you can find a class that's right for you. I know that as we've gone into 2021, I personally have been just trying to figure out how to wrap my mind around doing everything solo again, which is why I'm a huge fan of this class by Greg McCowan, Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less. It's something that I've been having to deal with personally and his book Essentialism was very helpful for me. So now taking his class on Skillshare just brings it to the next level. And the best part is it's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So if you click the link in the video description, the first 1000 of our subscribers will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. It's free learning, my friends, especially as we're going into 2021. Just believe in yourself, build on something this year. It's free to the first thousand of you. So just check it out. So as I actually asked me if I wanted to check out this monitor after we'd done a review of the Acer SB220Q, which you can check out right up there. I maintained in that video that it was probably one of the best budget gaming monitors that you can get. And as I had the retort with theirs, which came in at the exact same price point. However, due to COVID and a bunch of other delays, we're now doing this review several months after they sent it. And right now I would have to say that the price has gone up quite a bit. Currently on Amazon, this one is sitting at $119, but there's a $10 coupon if you click the little box, which effectively makes the price $110. The Acer is $93 right now. So there's a big price difference between the two. And at the moment, just right up front, I'd say go with the Acer over the Alzai. Now, let me explain why I think that. It's not that there's anything necessarily horribly wrong with the Alzai monitor. It's actually a pretty decent overall construction. It's a thin panel. The plastic actually feels pretty good and it's light. However, it does have a few key negative considerations that you might want to keep in mind. Number one, the stand is not great. It wobbles, which is just not something you want on your desk. Number two, the color accuracy is just not not good. To all of the color, there's this like green shift going on. The panel doesn't appear to be of a higher quality, as well as the fact that it has very bad contrast ratios. I'm not sure what the actual contrast ratio is, regardless of whatever spec they're quoting, but it's bad. Any dark scene that you might be playing would actually look washed out. And then anytime you're in a bright scene, such as right here in Cyberpunk, the road actually becomes so bright that you can't discern detail anymore. The contrast ratio actually impacts what you're actually going to be able to see you're losing so much detail on this monitor versus what I've seen in the Acer or another 22 inch LG that I've checked out as well. But it's not all negative with this monitor. As I mentioned, the overall build quality does seem to be pretty good besides the stand, which is just a slot in system. There's no screw holding it together, which might happen to explain some of the little wobbliness that's going on there. But the menu system to adjust everything, while not robust, the buttons actually to control it are surprisingly tactile and not actually a big deal. But then also at this price point, what we're seeing is that there's a vase amount, which is something that the Acer actually lacks. You can't vase amount the Acer SB220Q. You have to use the included stand or potentially drill into the monitor that you just bought. This one has vase amounts already included. So if you're going to vase amount this, obviously the stand is no longer a concern. And then when I checked out any ghosting or blur, it actually was remarkably okay. Not much to be noted about. There is a little bit, but it's not something that's really going to impact your game experience. And then as far as input lag using my Leo Bodner input lag tester, I only got eight milliseconds of lag, which actually is pretty dang good for a gaming monitor. So it has a lot of features that actually make it still a pretty enjoyable experience. That 75 Hertz looks buttery smooth over the 60 Hertz that you typically get in the 22 inch monitor variety. And it also has an included blue light filter that you can turn on in case you need that for whatever you're doing, whether it's long gaming sessions or long days at the office, turning on the 
the blue light filter to help reduce eye strain is a welcome inclusion in this that you don't typically see at this price point. So those are the pros. There is one more con that I want to mention that really isn't a big deal, and that is the fact that there are no speakers on this. And typically at this price point, I'm not expecting speakers on the monitor. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because there are speaker grill cutouts on the back of the monitor, which would indicate that it's actually a speaker set up right there. But while we're talking about the back of the monitor, just as far as I.O., you have the power in, you have VGA, a single HDMI, and then a headphone out, which is where the audio comes in. But why include the speaker grills? I suppose using the same chassis for different panels and different versions, one might have speakers, one might not, and it saves you money. So honestly, my conclusion on this Alzai monitor comes down to why I actually even agreed to review it in the first place. I think this might be an okay solution if the Acer SB220Q is out of stock, which it does go out of stock quite regularly because it is such a good monitor at the price that it's at, which just makes it so that people are buying it up left, right, and center. I could consider picking up the Alzai as a conciliation prize if this is the only thing that I can get in a reasonable time frame. It does have the worst contrast ratios. It does have the wobbly stand, but if I'm putting it on a monitor arm, it's not such a big deal. But one of the weird things about this is that Alzai actually promotes in its Amazon page that it's for business, which I think is more appropriate to what this is can be used for, not if you're doing any sort of professional work like color grading, or if you need to have something that's going to show any sort of dynamic range, this thing is not there for you. But in case you're just working with spreadsheets or Word documents, that could get you a long way, especially with the blue light filter. It's a huge improvement, especially for business users. So I can see why they're marketing like that, but it's also a 75 hertz, five millisecond response time panel that actually does remarkably decent at gaming. At $110, it's just not quite worth it. The price going up over the last few months really ruined a lot of the excitement that I had for this, which is primarily my fault. I think I probably would have given it a more positive review if it was at the $90 to $80 price point, because I think that's really where this would benefit. Sell this for $80, and I could easily recommend you overlooking some of the flaws because you can just realize that you saved money and everything's okay now. So again, I would only buy this if the Acer is out of stock and you're going to vase amount it, because otherwise you're just getting a subpar product and just pick up the Acer, which we'll leave linked in the video description. We'll also leave the Alzai linked in the video description. They're both gonna be Amazon affiliate links, which gives us a small kickback. Alzai only sent over the monitor. There was no money exchanging hands. The only money that would exchange hands is from Amazon if you happen to purchase from them. But we did exchange money with today's video sponsor, so let's talk about them again. Big thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Check them out at the link in the video description. Don't forget the first 1,000 of you who click that link will be able to get a free trial of their premium membership. And that's going to wrap up this review of this monitor. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you have any other monitors that you want us to check out here at UFD Tech. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed for more tech videos that we got coming your way. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.